Here's how you write a Hello World program in C++. Booleans are data types which can hold the values true or false. Integer values of 0 decay to false, whereas every other integer decays to true. In C++, the signed integer types are car, short, int, long, and long, long. On most platforms, car is equivalent to one byte, short is two bytes, int and long are four bytes, and long, long is uh, eight bytes. The difference between signed and unsigned integers is that unsigned integers can only represent positive values. In C++, unsigned car represents, uh, or is usually one byte, unsigned short is usually two bytes, um, unsigned int and unsigned long are usually four bytes, and unsigned long long um, is usually eight bytes. Whereas integers can only represent whole numbers, uh, floating point numbers can represent numbers with decimal points. In C++, the uh, floating point types are float, double, and long double. And uh, the difference between these types is that as you go from float to double to long double, you get more precision. But today, um, you should prefer to use double over the other floating point types. These are the logical operators AND, OR, and NOT. AND res evaluates the true if both B1 and B2 are true. OR res uh, evaluates the true if either B1 or B2 is true. And NOT res evaluates true if B1 is not true. The car data type is a simple data type which can only represent characters. A function is prefaced with its return type followed by its name and parameters. And a call to that function is uh, the name of the function followed by uh, arguments. The type void represents the absence of a type. So if you have a function that doesn't uh, return anything, you'd mark it as void. The three ways to initialize a variable are with the assignment operator, uh, something that looks like a function call, and with these uh, brackets. Um, these two uh, types of initialization are virtually the same. Uh, they will not warn against um, like narrowing conversions or, or anything like that. But uh, this will, and as you can see, um, this will not compile because um, the conversion from double to int requires an narrowing conversion. A pointer is a variable that stores a memory address to another variable. PTR stores the memory address to the variable n, and through PTR we can manipulate the value of n. Pointers are also mutable in that they can uh, change the memory address that they're referring to. So here, uh, PTR is pointing to uh, n1, and then with this assignment statement, it's pointing to n2. The variable ref is a reference, which is an alias to another variable. And unlike pointers, references are immutable. So if I set ref equal to n2, this just sets the value of n1 equal to the value of n2, which is 2. It doesn't make ref uh, refer to the value n2. Const is a type qualifier, which prevents a variable's value from being changed. It will apply to the thing that's immediately to the left of it, unless it is the leftmost thing, in which case it applies to the thing immediately to the right of it. So uh, n1 and n2 are effectively the same. They're both constant integers. PTR is a constant pointer to an integer, so you can change the value of the variable which PTR points to, but you cannot change the variable which PTR points to. PTR is a pointer to a constant integer, so you can change the uh, variable which PTR points to, but you cannot change the value of the variable which PTR points to. An if statement makes code execution conditional. This message, welcome back, is only printed if b is true, whereas welcome is printed if it is not. Within an if-else tree, the first block that's conditioned if value is the true is what executes. Here you can see that the values of b and b2 are both true, so this uh, code statement is what executes, even though both b and b2 are true, uh, because this block comes before it, 
uh, this is what ex is what executes. A for loop is usually structured like this: a variable declared here, a condition here, then use of the increment or decrement operator on the variable that's declared here. A for loop is usually intended to run a predetermined number of times. A while loop is usually intended to loop a variable number of times. This program repeatedly takes user input, outputs a reverse of that, and continues to do this until the user just hits enter and does not input anything. A do while loop is the exact same as a while loop, except it's guaranteed to iterate at least once. A break statement terminates execution of a loop. Within this loop, if fact times n will overflow, then this loop will end. A continue statement ends the current iteration a loop is on. If n mod 2 is equal to 0, then this code right here is not executed. If n mod 2 is uh, equal to 1, however, then this code is executed. Structs and classes are user-defined types that group variables and functions together. The only difference is that classes, they have uh, private members by default, whereas uh, structs have public members by default. In general, you should prefer classes to structs. A constructor is what is invoked when an object is constructed. A destructor is what is invoked when an object is destructed, aka goes out of scope. Because points members are public, it could be accessed like this. However, because squares members are private, it cannot be accessed like that. Protected enables certain class members to be accessible in derived classes, like right here, but not, acceptable, not accessible to the public. A switch statement is a branch that takes in integral expressions and selects code to execute based upon the values of those expressions. So here uh, you have the variable c, which is a enum constant. It, uh, since its value is pi, then this uh, branch will execute. It's important to include this break statement here because if you do not, there will be fall through. Sometimes it makes sense to pass by reference rather than by value to conserve memory. If I were to pass in the zeros vector by a value rather than by reference here, I would have had to copy 200 bytes, but because I'm passing by reference, I get to save a lot of memory. Memory allocation means reserving memory at runtime, whereas memory deallocation means releasing this memory. If you do not deallocate memory that you have allocated, then you have a memory. Numbers is a C style array, which contains elements all of the same type and in contiguous memory on the stack. Um, it can decay to a pointer, and you can access elements from it um, with this type of syntax. Numbers is a C++ style array, which has more functionality than a regular C array. Uh, it has member functions such as size, which return the size of the array, and member functions return iterators, which we'll get into later. A vector is a dynamic array, meaning its uh, elements are in contiguous memory, but its size can grow or shrink at runtime. Today, vector is a go-to container in C++. A forward list is a container with fragmented memory and individually linked nodes. The nodes can only be traversed forwards, and you cannot go backwards. A list is doubly linked, and unlike forward lists, you can traverse forwards or backwards. A set is a data structure which only contains unique values in sorted order, and as you can see, um, when we print the elements of data, it's going to be a one, two, three, four, five. It's only going to contain a one, one rather than three. A map is the data structure which associates keys with values. You can access values in a map by invoking the at method or using the subscript operator. However, uh, when you're using the at method and the key that you're searching for does not exist, an exception will be thrown. Whereas if you're using the subscript operator and the key you're looking for um, does not exist, then um, it will emplace the key with a random value. Smart pointers are modern C++ alternatives to raw pointers. Upon destruction, smart pointers will deallocate their memory, leading to less memory leaks. Unique pointers are the simplest smart pointers because they, can, they cannot be copied and they can only be moved. Unlike unique pointers, shared pointers can be copied and they can be passed in by value into functions, for example. A null pointer is a constant which represents that a pointer points to nothing. 
It is much safer than the old C style way of doing things, which was setting a pointer equal to zero. Iterators are objects that point to data within a container and they allow traversal. Inheritance allows you to reuse and extend a class. Because dog is an animal, you can invoke the speak method, which is from uh, the animal class, as well as the bark method, which is from the dog class. Virtual member functions enable derived classes to override behavior. When you invoke print underscore type on uh, a dog instance, it will print dog as opposed to animal. Namespaces allow you to group related code and prevent name conflicts. Templates allow you to write generic code. Because add is a generic function, it works with both doubles and integers. Concepts allow you to constrain template arguments. Because add only accepts integral arguments, it cannot work with double arguments. Const expert means a, a function or a variable can be used in a compile time context like this. Constival tells us that a function must be evaluated at compile time. Here, when we take user input and then try to plug it into this Constival function, we get an error. Constival also allows us to deduce whether or not a function is being evaluated at compile time. Here, when we call the factorial function, if it's not being evaluated at compile time, we print a message telling us so. Auto is a placeholder which allows the compiler to deduce the type of something. It is particularly useful for lambdas, which are anonymous functions. Inline allows you to have a global variable which can be shared across translation units. Both the source and main files uh, include this header with reference to the uh, pi variable, and yet the code will still compile fine. Static limits function visibility so that this function named func cannot be accessed within any other C++ files. And it also enables a, variables, uh, a variable within a function to maintain its value across function calls. So when I invoke this func um, method three times, uh, the, this variable will be incremented three times and it will be printed to the console. No except specifies that a function does not throw exceptions, which enables uh, the compiler to perform some optimizations.